Happy Independence Day, friends, and a tragic morning for some in the Philadelphia area. A gunman who was armed with two weapons and wearing a bulletproof vest, they say, killed five men and injured a toddler and a teenager in a mass shooting in southwest Philadelphia Monday night. We have absolutely no idea why this happened. This person decided to leave their home and target individuals, said the Philadelphia police chief. This all began about 8.30 p.m. on 56 and Chester Streets in the King Sessing neighborhood when police officers were flagged down in response to a report of gunfire in the area. Now, as you can see, this area looks to be pretty congested. It's not the worst looking area, but there are better areas in Philadelphia as well. They say the responding officers found multiple gunshot wounds at this location, and as they were preparing to take the victims to the hospital, they heard more gunshots nearby at 56th Street and King Sessing Avenue. This is only a block or so down the road from there. They say the officers found multiple shell casings at that location before hearing even more gunshots nearby along the 1800 block of Fraser Street, which is also about a block and a half, two blocks down from this location. The officers then spotted the suspected gunman, chased after him on foot. During the chase, the man fired multiple shots before police finally cornered him in an alley along the 1600 block of Fraser Street, according to the investigators. I'm assuming this is pretty much the alleyway that they are talking about when they refer to that. Police took the man into custody without further incident. Investigators say he was wearing a bulletproof vest with multiple magazines inside of it. He was also in possession of a scanner, a police scanner, an AR-style rifle, and a handgun. Now, that doesn't mean anything when they say AR-style rifle. We've seen before that it can be black, and it's pretty much going to be considered an AR-style rifle. Investigators have not released the suspect's identity yet, but they do describe him as a 40-year-old man, not very descriptive. Police also said, and this is kind of weird, a second person who apparently picked up a gun and fired at the 40-year-old gunman was also taken into custody. Three weapons and all were recovered in connection to the shooting. I have questions, but I want to point out some of the obvious. Like we were talking about yesterday where you have a rampage shooting and a conflict shooting. This right now has the appearances of being a rampage shooting, and I'll tell you why. And it does matter because, again, as I said yesterday, if you're going to solve these situations, you have to discern what the differences are between them in order to identify the root cause. You can't fix it without knowing what the problem is. What makes this different than your normal conflict shooting where people are just hanging out, gathering in big groups, or they get in arguments and start shooting at each other, this shooter was wearing a supposedly ballistic vest. Now, we don't know if it was just the vest in order to house the magazines or if they actually had ballistic plates inside of it. We don't know that. They're just saying a bulletproof vest. Again, we're talking about people who, uh, and I'm not picking on them, but officials who probably would not know a ballistic vest from a windbreaker. So it looks scary. It looks tactical. So that's what they assume it's bulletproof. That's very unusual. Unless these people in conflict areas and inner cities are suddenly now giving themselves away by wearing a ballistic vest, that's not normal. In other words, you're going you're gonna to walk into a situation wearing a ballistic vest. If I see you coming at me with a ballistic vest, I'm going to assume you want to shoot me. That's not usually what the people in conflict shootings want. They want the element of surprise. Or in some cases, they don't even tend to shoot somebody. They just have a gun, something pops off, and then they start shooting at each other. So the fact that the presence of the ballistic vest is there tells me a whole lot that this is a little bit unusual. The fact that there is a police scanner is very unusual. I'm not saying criminals don't use police scanners. I would be willing to bet that any criminal with an average IQ probably has access to a police scanner. Just seems a little weird that somebody has one with a ballistic vest out there shooting at people. And the other thing that kind of surprised me is the fact that they caught this person. Look, when you have conflict shootings in inner cities, these people know these neighborhoods. They are rarely with police in the area. Remember, police had already been summoned and were investigating the area, and this person is still shooting off shots. That ain't indicative of a person trying to get away. Usually they're taking their shots, they're hitting what they're trying to hit, and they're taking off. They're scattering. They don't want to be caught. They're not trying to get caught. They know the area, they know how to escape, and you usually ain't going to find them. Tell me the last time, other than somebody who was shot and passed out on the street, the last time you saw any kind of a gang-type shooting in the inner city where somebody just randomly got caught a couple of blocks down the road popping off more shots. It just doesn't happen that way. The thing that makes me wonder, that gives you a little bit of pause and question of whether or not this could be an actual rampage shooting or conflict shooting between gang members and whatnot is the fact that 
they did arrest somebody else. The other person was arrested supposedly because they picked up a gun. They're not saying if it was one of the main shooter's guns or if they just happened to find a random gun on the street, but that they picked up a gun and fired at the person who was shooting at them. That's kind of reminiscent of your conflict shooting. Um, if the person was a prohibited person, he might have said, hey, man, I was just trying to save the day. I saw a gun on the street. I started shooting back at this person. They did arrest that person who shot at the suspect, by the way. So, again, that throws a little bit of a question mark there, uh, if you ask me. Uh, again, this is a super fluid situation right now. Not a whole lot of information has come out since then. Uh, I find it a little bit odd that they haven't identified the suspect as quickly and as fast as they want to identify suspects in other rampage killings so quickly. They want to give you name, address, race. Uh, you even get a copy of his fingerprints out there. You're going to know everything about this guy and his extended family. And all we know is this is a 40-year-old person, 40-year-old man. So moral on as it comes up, guys. Hope you guys have a good Independence Day. Sorry for the bad news this morning. But as more of this comes out, I'm be happy to share it with you guys. God save the queen, man. I'm sorry. I thought this was America. He's over.